Turbonk is a weird ass game. If you don't know him, he was actually the mascot character for the Turbo Graphics 16. They needed their own Mario and Sonic for their system. So they came up with a cave boy with an oversized head. And look how well that turned out for them. I didn't really play the TurboGrafx-16 growing up at all. Instead, I was introduced to Bonk thanks to his NES game. This is actually the very same copy that I used to rent a lot from my local movie store. And I bought this game when they went out of business. Rest in peace, Munts Movie Land. But it's from that same movie store that I learned of Super Bonk. And it's thanks to Super Bonk that I learned what psychedelic drugs are like. This game has a plot, if you can call it that. Bonk is calmly walking through a jungle nearby Mount Doom, and he comes across a gigantic haunch of meat that is clearly labeled trap. Don't do it, Bonk! It might be a trap. Oh no. Bonk's arch enemy Drool shows up, and I guess he sends Bonk back even further in time. I don't think he thought this plan through. I mean, Drool does look a little high already. Bye, Bonk. So how far back in time did he go? Well, from the Cretaceous period all the way back to Chinatown. Yup, Bonk went back in time so hard he made a full loop to early 90s China. Because that's how time works. The Bonk games have always been platformers, but are weirdly unlike traditional ones like Mario or Rayman. Bonk's main attack is his gigantic noggin. He'll bash people in the face with his own skull until they die. Or Swan dives straight down and lets his cranium crush anything underneath him. And that's not all. He can swing his massive head in midair to control his velocity. Screw physics, because video games. Bonk can also slam his head against a wall so hard that he bounces off and jumps higher. And this totally doesn't cause whiplash so hard that his tiny neck's vertebrae shatter instantly upon impact. See, but this isn't the weird stuff that I was talking about. No, far from it, in fact. One of Bonk's staple power-up items is meat. Eating meat powers him up and I guess transforms him? I don't know. His clothes change and he gets some serious Dragon Ball Z eyebrows going on at least. His attacks also change. Instead of bonking with his head, he... Uh, glares so hard that it turns his enemies into stone? He also gets a sudden fear of heights because now when he jumps, he looks like he's about to poop himself. He can also suddenly bash the ground with his skull and turn everybody into stone. And in case that wasn't weird enough, Bonk can eat even more meat from here to transform again. Hitting this stage gives him invincibility for a few seconds, and it also turns him into... Uh, uh, you know what? I don't know. The game doesn't even really know, since it throws out question marks like, Beats me, dude, but this is happening. He doesn't even bonk things anymore. His attack becomes a tongue lash that whips people to death. And instead of head bashing the ground, he straight up bites the curb and walks away like a badass. By the way, we've only scratched the surface. Let's get weird! Another power-up that Bonk can get is a red piece of candy, and it shrinks him down into tiny size. He has all the same attacks and powers of his normal sized forms, only now he's filled with rage! And by that I mean pressing X has him literally spit out the word rage. And he can ride it. Let's get weirder! Along with the red candy, there's also yellow candy that makes Bonk normal sized again, and blue candy that makes him giant. Being giant is novel, but dang if it wasn't one of my favorite things as a kid. Even better, you can become giant versions of Bonk's other forms. The heart head lizard thing becomes a big heart-headed Godzilla monster. He actually might be my favorite. He always looks like he's having a good time. Oh yeah, the giant forms get special powers too. Godzilla Bonk can turn invisible and become completely invulnerable to everything for like 30 seconds. Remember super pissed off Bonk? For whatever reason, when he's gigantic, he becomes a chicken man. And he can lay eggs that explode. Wait a second. Okay, Godzilla Bonk gets to become invisible, and Chicken Bonk lays bomb babies. What kind of special power does Giant Regular Bonk? Ah! Oh! Oh God! <laughs> so just to recap all of Bonk's wackiness, Tiny Bonk is filled with rage. Angry Bonk turns people into stone, becomes a giant chicken, and combusts his children. Weird Lizard Bonk tongue lashes people, bites the curb, and Giant Godzilla Bonk can turn invisible. Is that it? Does that cover it? Nope! There's more! Bonk can get crushed by a wall and turn into a crab! And use his special extra attack of pinch your butt! That's the gameplay of Bonk. Getting candy, bonking enemies, and collecting smileys. You know, at first I thought the smileys were like Mario's coins and 100 get you a 1-up. But no, they're a currency that you can spend. 
except that there's only one place in the entire game that you can spend them, and that's on this elevator here to save you like 30 seconds of time. Otherwise, they're useless, despite being everywhere. I guess they attribute to a high score at the end of the game, but who cares about that? There's even an overabundance of bonus games to get you more stupid smileys. The bonus games start by having a plant monster fly forward, stab Bonk in his head, and take him off into the sky. There's a handful of different games too, usually collecting so many items in a time limit or climbing to the top. I like how casual the game is about your performance at the end though. I gotta blow up the balloon for the children! Oh no! I ran out of time! Did I do it? Nah. The bonus games are everywhere. I would do one, walk a few steps, and immediately find another. It kind of defeats the excitement of a bonus game when they happen way too often, especially since the reward is typically smileys, which don't do anything for you. I get that they flooded stages with them to make young kids always feel good and special for getting all these bonus stages. Come on, man. I started ignoring them most of the time, and I recall doing the same thing when I was young. The game itself isn't very hard either. In fact, it's pretty much a cakewalk. You're given three hearts to start with, and each heart can take three hits before depleting. So right away, that's nine hits. And you can extend your life up to six hearts for a total of 18 hits before death. And there are no bottomless pits, so you don't die very much in this game. And you know what? That's fine, because this game was designed to be an enjoyable, pleasant ride for the completely silly scenarios. It's hard to be angry when Bonk has such a happy smile on his face as he's bouncing around on bubbly clouds. And even if all of his transformations make no damn sense now, this is the kind of insane imagination that would come straight from an 8 year old's mind, which happened to be how old I was when I played it. So yeah, I loved it. Although as a kid, I never really noticed how bizarre the story is. I mentioned earlier how Drool effortlessly tricks Bonk into a time machine and sends him backward in time only to end up somewhere in modern Chinatown. Going through some rivers and caves of Chinatown has Bonk end up at what is known as the Bad City, which thanks to the background is clearly Paris, France, hit with a sudden burst of urban development. And eventually you climb the Eiffel Tower, all the way up to the clouds. This is actually pretty fun since all the clouds are trampolines and with the music, you're constantly in a feel-good mood. Bonk goes from the clouds back down to the city, and eventually to the jump wheel, which is a ferris wheel covered in springy bounce flowers. And they spring Bonk to the top of the sky! Onto a commercial airliner! At least this place has a boss. It's a pterodactyl stuck in a robot crescent moon. He, along with all the bosses, is really easy. Defeating him causes Bonk to fall off the plane and dive straight into... Jurassic Isle? Which means that when Bonk fell off the plane, he went through a time warp, putting him into the year... You know what? Forget it. The Bonk timeline is more screwed up than Zelda's. So I guess we're going back to avoiding dinosaurs in the jungle. But it's still at least somewhat modern day because Bonk ends up inside a dinosaur's house. And wouldn't you know it, dinosaurs think they're people. They have queen-sized beds, televisions, crippling debt, just like us. This is actually a pretty fun level since it resembles something we're familiar with our own houses, but it's like we're tiny and traversing through it. It's pretty imaginative, even to the little things like being able to turn the lights on and off. This level ends when Bonk swims into a glass of orange juice, only to get sucked into a straw right into a dinosaur's mouth. And this might be the weirdest of all the Bonk levels ever. This entire stage is crawling around the inside of a dinosaur. You can see his rib bones. You fight white blood cells, tapeworms, and his literal inner demons. You start off near the heart, then you go all the way up into, oh my god, his brain? You speed through the gyri and sulky of a dinosaur's brain. No other game in the world can say that. This is actually a really annoying part of the game. It's pretty much a crapshoot, hoping you pick the right path to get to the end. Like those dumb puzzles they put in the back of kids' activity books at Pizza Hut. And from the brain, you go to the inside of his heart. I think we did it. We reached the top. I mean, where else do you go from here? After defeating another sucky boss, the sexually frustrated dinosaur sneezes Bonk out so hard that it launches him out of the stratosphere. Thankfully, the moon was there to halt Bonk's perpetual motion so that we could have several wacky stages here. For example, did you know that our moon has several moon towers? And moon ruins? And a moon pyramid? With some kind of geisha alien bunny lady guarding it at the end? 
But hey, when you defeat her, she drops a massive piece of blue candy. And this brings us to what may be the greatest stage in the entire game. Whee! I'm flying through space! I'd like to remind you that you need to play this game in the mindset of a child, specifically one who is just learning about her solar system. And along comes a game that lets you fly right through it. Everything is here. The asteroid belt, Mars, Neptune, oh, Pluto. These were truly better days for you. Anyway, use the sweet space level to fly to a massive artificial comet, which apparently is part of the big comet empire heading straight for Earth, and their leader is a robotic elephant vacuum cleaner. Bonking him causes the entire comet to explode, which launches Bonk through space so hard he goes into warp speed and becomes a spinning space crab. Did I mention this game is weird? I have no explanation for this level. You're a spinning space crab shooting smaller crabs into spinning smiley faces for different rewards. Yep. Moving on then. And this all somehow brings Bonk right back onto Earth. Now it does do a super cliche padding technique here in that you have to face all of the bosses again. This game is already really short, less than two hours. And this is a cheap way to get more out of the game, especially since all the bosses are incredibly easy. Finally, Bonk arrives at Drool's tower and uses his rage to ascend to the top. And I guess Drool somehow became significantly larger than when we last saw him at the beginning of the game. And he's got a robot suit. Breaking the robot hands causes him to drop a piece of big blue candy, which grows Bonk up to Drool's size. And in a really cool effect, they just shrink the environment around him to represent this. I think it's kind of neat at least. Anyway, this boss fight is dumb. And when Drool's machine breaks even more, he spits out a second piece of giant blue candy. And for how lame all of the boss fights were in this game, this very last one makes up for all of it. Yeah! Come here, you tiny piece of crap! Let Bonk crush you! Whee! <laughs> Drool runs away from Bonk, only to end up in the very same time machine trap he laid out for Bonk in the beginning, setting himself into the past future or whatever. And then a super pleased Bonk jogs home. But not before a caged Drool promises that he'll be back. He never came back. This was the last new Bonk game to be released in the West. I guess after this, it became hard to come up with even wackier ideas. That's why my final rating for this game is a birthday clown tripping on acid out of 10. I have no idea how else you could possibly come up with half the ideas in this game other than drugs. But damn, if Super Bonk doesn't have some creativity. The transformations, going inside a dinosaur, going into space. This may not have the same effect on me as an adult as it did a kid, but I acknowledge what it once did. And it works great for kids. All the zany enemies and environments and the extremely forgiving gameplay makes Super Bonk a great platformer for someone who is truly awful at platformers or finds Mario to be too intimidating. It's fun for any kid and simple enough that anyone with half a brain can beat it. It has a sort of energy and atmosphere that only a child can fully enjoy and appreciate. I still like this game for what it is. I don't need to be challenged or see innovative new gameplay features all the time. It's kind of nice to have something relaxing. Between all the fun stages and the brilliantly uplifting music and the cartoony graphics, Super Bonk is just a game that makes you feel good. It'll easily get rid of any kind of anger that you have pent up inside of you. <coughs> Thank you for watching! Please subscribe if you want to see more videos like this in the future, and if you like the video, click like to like the video. If you want to watch another video that's similar to this, uh, might I suggest the King's Knight video for you to watch. If you just want to watch some other stuff, be sure to check out my gameplay channel. And you can show this video to your friends, and your parents, but not your grandma. She ain't gonna like it. <laughs>